Hey everyone, Waterbot here, and welcome to Void Terrarium 2. Sequel, very direct sequel, as far as I can tell. Sequel to Void Terrarium 1, a kind of super niche mystery dungeon style roguelite dungeon crawler. I guess the easiest way of describing it, uh, where you're a little robot running around taking care of uh, this, like, the last human, effectively, uh, who is... I mean, honestly, has gotten Last of Us, you know, has has the mold going on. Uh, but she's somehow living and thriving somehow, and you're just supposed to keep her from um, not going full moldy. I, that's really all I know. I only played a little bit of the first game uh, on the Switch. What is this? Oh, it's a lag trap. Yay. It's just going to slow me down for a bit. It's no biggie. But yeah, I caught my eye back in the day for whatever reason, just because it kind of looked neat. Oh, I gotta figure out how to... Oh, is it? Nope, that's not it. Okay, it looks like there's more. Ah, this is how I, how I turn. Hold square. Okay, cool. Is there anything else around here? No, it doesn't look like it. I'll have to figure out how to pass the time. Oh, right, I have a limited amount of battery, too. I think I get... Wait, no, I got more battery. I don't know how to use it. Ah, here it is. So it recovers 50 energy. So yeah, pretty much no reason to worry about anything. So yeah, it's just doing a cold open on a dungeon crawl. Probably is either as some kind of uh, way of setting up why we lose our powers, or just to get me used to the combat style. Now, yes! So when I swing, I swing in an arc and hit everything in front of me. I also seem to be extraordinarily overpowered for this dungeon. Spawn Swapper. Spawn Destructor. HP drops to 1, defeats all foes in a 3x3 area. And then swap places with someone else in the room or a target. Alright. I just want to see if there's anything useful around here. And considering we don't need to worry about energy, I might as well just be... Well, I mean, we might have to worry about energy, but I might as well be at least somewhat aggressive about exploring everything. Just for the sake of it. I don't play a whole lot of mystery dungeon style games. They just, uh... There aren't many of them. Well, no, there are probably plenty, but I don't hear about them. They don't generally get marketed in the West that aggressively, from what I know. Or at least they don't get marketed to me. Uh, but I gotten into this one because it was... I don't know, I, I have a soft spot for, uh... Robots with, like, TV faces. Uh, the original Wanderbot design had kind of a square head thing going on. Oh, that's kind of cute. Error detected. Eliminating. Oh, it's cute, but it, now it's time to fight. Well. I broke it. Saab, where did you go? I don't like being alone. Sniffle. I'm assuming that's the mold girl, but I'd forget. Boy, this looks... Oh, is this actually supposed to be, like, the end of the first game? Kind of recapped? Like I said, never got there, so... I don't actually know. And... I pressed A because it was taking too long. <laughs> I missed whatever that was. Uh, oh, I can jump. Why can I jump? I guess it's fine. I think I can even walk slower. No, I don't have a button for walking slower. I really like the music for this. Eek! Please stop, Robbie. Don't destroy me. Huh? R Robbie, wait, why are you... Weren't you trying to destroy me? 
Oh boy, this really is some spoilers if you care about the previous game. I kind of don't that much. It's I'm sure it's fine. Ah, Robbie, you you went uh went to all that effort just to repair me. Thank you so much. Oh, come to think of it, Toriko, how's Toriko? Uh huh. Uh huh. So she's holding out in that vessel you built for her. Looks like we put her in a cryopod. I see, she must have been lonely when you were out exploring. But you can rest assured now, I'll watch over her just like I used to. Now then, Toriko must be feeling awfully cramped in her little vessel. What do you say we let her out? You know, it's kind of one of those where this is most assuredly like taking place after the last game. Uh, but it doesn't really feel like you need the full context, probably. I think I wish there was a little bit more. And I'm sure people watching this would too. Wow, we really must have done a number on this place in the finale of the previous game. Pat Toriko's head. It's cute. Oh gosh, he's got mold growing out of an eye. Socket. I forgot about that. That's actually horrifying. Toriko, you're such a cutie pie. Sure, why not? Please excuse my sudden outburst. I have finally calmed down now. In any case, I'm so very glad she's alright. It appears I have been broken for quite some time. You spent all of that time searching the wastelands for parts to fix me, even. While taking good care of Toriko? Oh, Robbie, how will I ever be able to thank you? Now, returning our attention to the terrarium. I can see you've been hard at work in making makeshift repairs to it. It's taken quite a battering due to my absence, hasn't it? As it stands, airborne contaminated spores will seep in and infect little Toriko. But now that I'm back, you have nothing to fear. No doubt your memory processes that can recall that I am a mul multifunctional advanced AI set up in this underground shelter with complete authority and operational facilities. As long as I have the appropriate blueprints and resources, there's nothing I can't create. It does not appear we have many materials remaining, however. I need you to head into the wastelands to gather more materials for me. I wonder if I can craft anything with the materials currently available to us. Oh, I most certainly can. Robbie, I have everything I need to make a stuffed animal. Um, I've caused Toriko so much pain and suffering in my absence, so I'd like to give her a stuffed animal as a reward for being such a good girl. You think that's a good idea too, Robbie? I'm so glad to hear that. If that's the case, then I'll transmit the blueprint to you. It's a blueprint for an extra special stuffed animal that I've created for a special occasion. We've acquired gift. Go on then, try crafting the stuffed animal right now. Okay, home menu. Home menu features options related to item crafting in the terrarium. Additionally, functions for powering up the robot will be added over time. Start off now by opening the home menu. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Item craft AI plushie. AI plushie. Okay, special resources, items, yeah. You did it! What do you think? I designed this toy to resemble yours truly. There's even a speaker inside of it, so I can project my voice to her from far away. Toriko won't have to feel so lonely anymore when you're gone. At least I hope she won't. Now then, let's give it to Toriko, post haste. Seems you've... The items you've crafted are stored in the vault over there. Retrieve them, bring them over. Cool. Okay, so we also have quests, but we only we have no other quests. AI plushie. Crafted items and food are stored in the vault. Select an item, retrieve it from the vault. Items stored within the vault are divided into categories. You can access the vault by pressing X. Cool. Yeah, it's actually kind of cute. Being a robot kind of distance and making a little AI plushie so you can chat with her more directly. Like... At first it was a little weird, and then it's like, no, actually, clever. Oh. <laughs> Holy smokes. That's not what I was expecting. Huh. Ah! Her Tor Torico's Torico's arm. 
Why did we never get her, like, new clothes? Oh boy. Robbie, please tend to Toriko. I'll look into exactly what happened to her. <laughs> Ow. Robbie, my analysis is completed. It appears the connective tissues around her shoulder have deteriorated, causing her arm to detach. <laughs> the cause is currently unclear, but I do know how to mend her. What? I will transmit a blueprint for something we can use to mend her arm. Cell Enhancer. It appears you can procure necessary materials from a nearby wasteland. I'll transmit the coordinates of the wasteland directly to your memory banks. <laughs> Be sure to select the right location when heading to the wastelands. I await your successful return, Robbie. Take care. <laughs> what? Okay, system menu, read things, obtain a broken syringe, craft a cell enhancer. Well, that's simple enough. But, um... Oh. Okay. Oh, hey. It's the planet. I don't think this is Earth. Or it's a much smaller microcosm. Who knows? Oh, so we also have the training grounds, if I want to learn how to play. But I think I'll figure it out. I think I'll figure it out. Okay, how do I... Oh, view scenario objective blueprints from the objectives tab. Well, that's nice. I guess I can just punch if I want to pass the time. I can just punch the time away. Well, there's another battery. And a guard potion. Okay. I'm just gonna sit here and swing. Alright, we've leveled up. So, heal 10% of damage dealt when there are four or more enemies. Oh. That's a neat passive. Masochist. I'll pick it up. Last, last time I played this. Oh! Oh, right. I reset my level every time I do a run, and the deeper, uh, the longer I go, the higher level I get, and every time I level up, I get a perk. I remember, that's why I liked this game so much. Most Mystery Dungeon games feel kind of static to me. Uh, maybe it's just because I haven't played enough of them. But I like the, the random roguelike power-ups when leveling up here. I thought that was actually a really clever design choice. I don't necessarily know if it's, like, that deep, but on the flip side, that level of, like, player control and, and agency. Agency is a big part of what I like about certain games, especially roguelikes. Oh, there was a slime creature. Hey, you know what? There we go. I know we heal very slowly over time. I got a grenade, you know? I think some of these I actually want to use. I don't think I can carry them back with me. So, before we end off... I mean, even beyond that, maybe I should just kind of use items pell-mell rather than hoarding them. Grenade. 40 damage. Sure. I should probably use that on the bigger stuff. Oh, warp trap rude. At least I know where it is. Time to go step on it again, like a fool. Anything else here? Yeah. Extra battery. And another grenade. I should probably save the grenades for groups. So I don't think items drop from enemies. Eh, this guy looks tough. Use grenade. I don't know what... Uh, no, they do drop items. Okay. Yeah, actually reasonably tough. And we get a... Mute smoke bomb, probably? Alright, so what do we want? Machine-type enemies have a chance to drop leaky batteries. Or increase defense. Well, I'm gonna go for the batteries. I don't actually know how long the runs go, but... Unlimited power seems like a really good idea. Oh, well, I found the broken syringe. And a getaway gadget. Now, getaway gadget. Let's probably go home. No, it warps to another area on the lair. That makes a lot more sense. Wasn't sure if it was town portal or otherwise. But I can keep going down for some reason. Oh, go complete. Return to the terrarium. Okay. I wonder if we ever get to the point where it's kind of mostly just endless exploration. So that's another expedition in the books. When you return to the home, 
All items in your possession are converted into resources. Most of the items are converted into general resources, while others, such as quest objectives, are turned into special resources. The amount of special uh, amount of resource elements will be converted into is found at the bottom. Collecting 100 elements amounts to one general resource. Resource conversion occurs regardless of whether you return to the base voluntarily or due to incapacitation. Being incapacitated won't reduce the number of resources obtained, so don't worry about inca incapacitation as you continue to collect plenty of resources. In fact, feel free to die 100 even 200 times. It's not a big deal. <laughs> okay. Sure. Why not? So this is like barely roguelike-ish. It's mostly just your progress in the dungeon is reset, but everything else is saved. Honestly, I like that though. Oh, Robbie, welcome back. Okay, craft a cell enhancer. Item craft, cell enhancer. It seems we have everything we need, so let's start treating her right away. Hello, here, I am... Please start by injecting her severed arm with the enhancer. I'm just gonna... Glue it back together? Red spots have appeared, you say. That's no problem. I expected as much. For the next step, you need to inject her shoulder where the arm used to be. This is kind of horrifying. Like, heartwarming, yes. Uh, have red spots appeared on Toriko as well? That's what we want to see. Now then, proceed by holding her severed arm to her gaping, sh gaping shoulder to connect the two together. This is a little bit more body horror than I was expecting out of a cute roguelike. <laughs> or mystery dungeon game. Have you done it? Have you positioned her arm correctly? All that's left to do now is lay her down gently. Her arm should bond in time. Let's wait patiently. I don't know how I would feel about being like the last human being t cared for. Oh gosh. I mean, it makes sense to give it a tug, but still. Looks like her arm is successfully reattached. Thank goodness. I didn't expect such an ordeal so soon after being reunited with Toriko. As they say, there's a cloud in every silver lining. It just goes to show how meticulous we need to be in taking care of Toriko. There's no question that our frail Toriko will inevitably fall victim to various illnesses and misfortunes during her life in this contaminated world. But it still shorts my it still shorts my cardio circuits just thinking about it. Oh, cardio is in heart. Uh heart skips a beat, I guess. Despite all odds, we've been able to overcome another hardship, thanks to you, Robbie. Let's do our best to take care of Toriko once again. Right then, the Wasteland's most formidable duo is back in action, which means we should probably discuss what the future holds. Can you pay me a visit later? She looks to be in shock. <laughs> like, we didn't exactly do a pat on the head there. That was more of a just pat on the face. It's time to discuss what we have to do now. The terrarium is in disarray and the number of functions have been suspended. We must fi fix these facilities so that we can protect Toriko. Time is of the essence. Fortunately, it shouldn't be too difficult to restore the terrarium to its former glory. The blueprints we collected previously are still intact, so all we need are the required materials. I'm afraid I must ask you to set off on another expedition to the wastelands. The other robot. Oh goodness, is that a cloud AI robot? Well, that's worrying. Chief, preparations for test subject T065 are complete. Good, commence the experiment. T, Robbie, please wake up, Robbie. What in the world? Some kind of distortion is slowly swallowing the entire terrarium. I'm not sure what it is, but it can't be good. Robbie, please place Toriko back in the vessel and bring her here.
Phew, it appears we've saved Toriko in the nick of time. I wish I could say the same for the terrarium. It's been swallowed up by that distortion. I, have to, I hate to say this, but we must dispose of this terrarium. The distortion is still spreading. We don't have much time, so I'll be brief. I've gone ahead and surveyed our surroundings to find a location for a new home. It just so happens there's a place with a console I can be installed onto. That's also the ideal environment for building Toriko a new home. Please take Toriko to this new location in our vessel. If you could, please also take my memory chick, uh, chick, chip from this console and bring me with you. If I was still connected to the networks digitally as I was in the prior, was prior to the destruction of the colony, I could have moved myself, alas. The only feasible solution now is to have you carry my memory chip along with you. Hurry, the distortion is closing in. We don't have time to dawdle. I'll shut myself down now, down for now. So, Robbie, please get us to safety. I know it's straps coming off the background, but it totally looks like we just have like a big leak or a branch just coming off the back. Uh, okay, I guess and there's nothing here. I'm just going to assume we're bringing it with us. Oh, escape route and then going further. Are we going across the sea? Sure, why not? And then we just have a totally regular normal dungeon crawl to go along with this. The one thing I will say, and I'm sure I'm going to get a comment or two on this one. Not a cheap little game. Oh, there's the enemy. Unfortunately, my sight radius is bad. Attack misses, increased damage dealt, or recovery repair items by 30%. Go for that. Plan B might have made more sense. I don't think I'm going to be taking that much damage here. But still. I wonder if my materials get carried over or not. Oh, warp trap, whatever, it's fine. Like, this definitely is the kind of game that I would recommend if you're looking for a good uh, mystery dungeon game to pick up. I'm not convinced it's going to be exactly consumer grade. I'm quite curious actually why it is so expensive. Maybe it's a lot longer than I think it is. Uh, which is odd, you know, I'm, I'm going through this. I'm literally writing an essay on... Um, on kind of the price of games and why why we shouldn't look down on like higher price things but i think even then there's still kind of a uh, a limit of like oh yeah this might actually be too expensive but maybe kind of niche products high uh high price to account for low buyers that's probably the case ow do i have any no i don't have any repair potions i should probably drink a guard potion before the next fight Unless I managed to actually heal up, which I could. Because I heal kind of slowly. As yeah, one of those guys, I don't think we need to worry about it too much. Yeah, so to some degree, what I do want to do is hoard resources. Try and leave a dungeon with a full pack, if at all possible. This is bad for my elixir syndrome. The idea of like, oh, maybe I should actually hold on to this thing because I might need it later, except for amplified further. As... Yeah, I should have gone for that uh, booster. Oh well, toolkit. I'm sure I'll get more. There we go. Like... If anything, I would actually say this is, ooh, inventory by three or defense by two. I'm going to go for the defense just because I don't think this dungeon run is going to be long. So a little bit of defense might actually go a long way to just making me tank through stuff-ish. Though I, I think we're still very much kind of on, on tutorial mode where I can lose, but it's going to be hard. I don't even know what losing at this point would look like. We just go back and then it'd be like, oh no, how did we live? I guess not that it matters one way or another. But yeah, I almost kind of feel like this would have been perfect for like the Game Pass or something. One of those games that very much fits a niche audience that is probably going to play the heck out of it. 
but otherwise most people will just kind of pass over it or idly give it a shot because it looks neat. But it's on uh, Switch and PlayStation. Let's see, do we want to chuck a grenade? Oh, that's boost. Oh, and I can see what everything is worth too. So to some degree, like the batteries are worth getting rid of. I'll keep that in mind. That was actually kind of low. Anyway, are we not done? Oh. I would have assumed I'd run out. Okay. Oh. Guard potion is way better than I thought. Well, defense is pretty good. Uh, let's see. Do we want to... Let's snag both of them. Oh, that's what these symbols were in the prologue. Like smoke bomb. Let's see. Another toolkit? Yeah. Because, yeah, what is the lag smoke bomb? Eh, worth a reasonable amount of materials. I guess the question is, how much do I want to explore? Well, I guess it'll let me burn resources. To pick up the most valuable stuff. And since my stats are actually pretty good, I don't think we need to worry too much about hoarding things. Or, sorry, loss. Another guard potion. Here's the question. Guard potion. 20... Yeah, guard potion is going to be more valuable to me than a, a battery. I don't know about a toolkit, though. Toolkit 2.0 is worth an amount. Watch me run out of batteries because I'm I'm being too picky. Okay, there we go. No, there we go. No, it ain't that. Ah. The toolkit 2.0 is 40 and 15 versus 30 and 5. It is kind of interesting how I've immediately turned into a bit of a loot monger of. Oh, okay. This item is better. This is not. Alright, oh, I should probably quaff a thing. Uh, keeping repair items after use? Nah, let's go for the bag augment. Let's actually use the guard potion. I'm sure we'll find others. There we go. Rebound trap, not much of a problem. And the other reason why I bring up the price is I'm not actually seeing a whole lot visually different with this game compared to the previous one. It almost seems like just a direct continuation. Uh, with, uh, I'd have to put them side by side, but direct continuation with no like visual asset change. Uh, oh, was my antenna broken? I don't remember one of my two, like, antennae things being broken. Huh. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to grab that one, nor do I care that much. Been inflicted with defend, but I'm just gonna beat it until it dies, because what else am I going to do? I have nothing else. It does make me want to go back and play, actually, the uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game someday. I know Shell and I started playing that a long time ago, and it was kind of fun. I liked the idea of the co-op. The execution was a little bit questionable. Have we not escaped yet? Wow. Okay, do we have another guard potion? Yes. Shooting at me. 
Okay, so we have a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, let's see, none of these are potions. We have a lot of grenades. Uh, we should probably also just quaff a battery. I'm gonna hold on to the purple ones because I think purple is better. Yeah. Where'd that... Oh. I see, we have a whole second section here. Now, let's see, lag status, thir 20 turns. No, I probably don't want to mess with that. I should throw it when I actually have visual range at an enemy. It does feel like the dungeons are a little longer, and the prologue is faster. Or faster, the intro is a little faster. Uh, yeah, let's just dive in. I wonder if it's a 10 floor dungeon then. Because remember it taking a while before I could actually go... Ooh, bomb explosion range by two tiles. Nullify damage taken by explosions. Yes. Uh, but it, it took a while, from what I remember, before I actually got to the, the cool stuff. Ah, still inflicted with lag. It's fine. I should have just thrown the uh, grenade first. I think it actually just would have one-shot him. But, oh well. Okay, so... Throw. Wow. The uh, AoE on that is huge. Also, Mighty Potion. Invincibility, but for 10 turns. Gotcha. I might hoard, hold on to that. I want to find a monster zoo. Because that is that is what wrecked me the first time I ever played this game. Is that I walked into a room just absolutely stunningly filled with monsters. And there wasn't anything I could do about it. And so I want to try that again because I feel like I'd actually do well. It's a little injured. Might as well use a grenade or two. Keep missing. Okay. Inflict damage to enemies in a one tile radius every turn, or... Yeah. I like these randomized power-ups. They're nice. Okay, so we, we're getting a lot of grenades. Seriously, where's the... Where are the enemy hordes? I'm ready for them. I brought explosions. Explosion warning! matter to me. I feel like that warning shouldn't shouldn't play if uh Okay, there we go. Warning should not uh should not go off if I'm explosion immune. But why make the exception? All right. So is this place going to look any better than the last one or is it still going to be kind of garbage? I see glass. Are we putting her in a in a test tube? Oh no. Actually, it might be more of a dome thing. Okay, that works a little bit better. Oh, there's the usual vault. Where's the computer, though? This doesn't look much better. <laughs> this looks really janky in the wrong kind of way. Oh, it's not a flap. It's just a giant hole in the backpack. Still looks like a leak to me. <laughs> She's upside down. This place. Oh, Robbie, thank goodness you managed to get here safe and sound. What about Toriko? She looks perfectly fine as well. I'm so relieved I might short out. Huh? What was that distortion that swallowed up the terrarium? I wish I knew. I presume you don't have any ideas either. Maybe it was broken and I just didn't notice. What? You've seen these distortions in other places before. Something strange happens every time? Curiouser and curiouser. Perhaps something is starting to happen to this world. In any case, we don't know enough to work with. 
uh, yet know enough to work with. Uh, I'll start looking in the di into the distortion and see what I can, can uh, see what I can find out. In the meantime, there's something I'd like you to do for me. It's all thanks to you that we've safely arrived at our new base, but as you can see for yourself, it's completely devoid of anything useful at all. Even worse, all the blueprints and crafted items you used to have were all swallowed up by the distortion, along with the old terrarium. And there's a reset point. Yes, this is just what humans would have uh, would have called having nothing but the shoes on our backs. Oh, that's why I'm having trouble. The AI is messing up colloquial colloquialisms, and it's throwing me off because I think it's actually doing it correctly and trying to read it straight. Anyway, so with that, it's time to set out on on expeditions once more to collect and craft everything Toriko needs. Huh. Sorry, needed some water. <laughs> I knew you'd be all hands on deck. Fake laughing is like the one thing I cannot do. Right then, there's a lot that we need to get done. But I think building the terrarium should come first. I tried my best to find a place that would be perfect for building a terrarium. But right now it just looks like a washed up wasteland. Toriko would be completely overwhelmed by contaminants if you were to take her out of the vessel right now. So first things first, let's make a giant terrarium that can protect Toriko from the contaminated atmosphere. Luckily some of the relics around here might might make fine terrariums as you can patch them up. Let's build the perfect home for the, from these old bottles. I'll transmit the blueprint to you now. I've also gone ahead and uploaded the coordinates of where you can find the materials you need to make the bottle. You can head out to the wastelands via that exit over there. Feel free to ask me for help if you ever get confused about where to go or what you need to do. I'm sure I have a bite or two of advice stored away. Good luck and safe travels, Robbie. Okay, so I'm assuming I can make nothing. Wait, did I not get any resources off of that last one? Aww. Oh, I got scammed. Alright, so we got practice area, training grounds, residential area. Oh, is it a two-parter? Looks like it, yeah, so I have to go through the residential area first. An area where humans gathered and lived. People lived tough lives and lacked resources. Always defending against contaminated mycelium. It really is Last of Us type shield. Ooh. Right, we actually have like a equipment that we can we can equip. I don't remember what the shields do exactly. Okay, looks like we're good. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, I guess it makes sense. Oh. I know this is kind of an elite type enemy. Oh, that was a good crit, and we get a level. Bomb damage or attack? Absolutely going for the attack boost. Bomb damage is tempting, but unreliable, seeing as I... Uh, let's see, wooden pillar. Oh. Gotta stop walking over that trap. At least it's just lag. Though lag is uh, probably quite deadly if I'm in an emergency situation. Yeah. Okay. Handyman. 20% chance of increasing max HP by 2 when using repair items. Thus, for the expedition, when stacked, chance increases. I like that. And yeah, we have to actually, like, develop meta progression stuff externally. I don't think anything from these runs carries over except for the stuff that I find. Which is... I mean, it makes sense. It's a little bit of a shame because some of the uh, some of the upgrades are really cool, and it'd be sick if I could actually hold on to them. But I also recognize that that would be really, really broken. What genre of music would you say this is? Because, like, I personally think of it as fantasy star lobby music. Or just sci-fi lobby music, but it's like, it's definitely got to be a full genre that people make music for beyond just game background, like, OST stuff. But I think that's like the only place where I generally ever hear it. Okay, so I can approach these turrets. 
as long as I'm not directly on the in a court, uh, cardinal direction with them, I can approach them safely. There's no like speed up mode. I know uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon had a like sprint to the end of the line or something. There we go. And we get critical damage bonus or defense. I'm gonna go for the defense. And we get a big battery. Nice. If I do hint, pull the R for a hint. Fifth and eighth layers of the Dead Sands. So yeah, we've gotta go through two different dungeons to even get what we're looking for. I guess this is gonna take a little while. The turret was asleep. Oh, we got a drill? Active skill dash. Oh. Cost five energy. Okay. Well, considering we have a decent amount of batteries, I'm gonna do it anyway. Yep. Worth it. And yeah, it's got a bit of a cooldown, but I mean, it's fine. If I'm going to be up against some big chunky machine, I might as well use the dash and just wham it as hard as I can. Do I just do 25 damage? Oh, it's because I have the drill equipped. It's still worth it, but... You made me drop all my stuff, rude. I keep stepping on it. Yeah, it's because this above me actually blocks passage. And so I kept accidentally just walking over it. We. Yeah, that's really satisfying. Now do I just... Oh, it even lets me get a free hit in. Cool. Uh, let's see. Let's pop a battery. Seeing as we're getting kind of low. I don't actually know if there's a... Uh... Let's see, what was I going to say? Oh, I don't know what happens when I run out of energy. I'm assuming I just move really slowly. I think it did happen when I was playing the first one, but I don't remember that well. Oh, and we're just done. Oh, I see. So we do a couple of levels there, and then we can move on to the next one. Interesting. So this way you can have kind of your initial starting biome and then move to somewhere new while you level up. That makes sense. So eventually we might have to go through a couple levels of residential, then dead sands, then somewhere else. That actually is kind of cool. Dead sands, a sector built underneath a desert. The ever-changing structure was buried, has buried whatever kind of facility it was once here. Righto. Oh, good. We actually have a new biome and high quality sand cannot be picked up. Fair, ow. This thing's hurt. Reveal the location of items on the current floor on the minimap. Or heal. Let's go with this. Battery low doesn't seem particularly useful considering everything. So let's use the power potion. Do we have a guard potion? The answer is no, but I'm gonna snag the high quality sand all the same. That cactus hurt. But yeah, the music here is new. I like that. I don't know if, um. Okay. Cactus dance. Yeah, it actually seems very practical for me to just go big fighty. Uh, let's see, what do we even have? That's the one problem. What would I get rid of? I'm just gonna drop the getaway gadget. We want blueprints more than anything else. Because that's actually how we... figure out, uh, that's how we build all the new things that we want to find. I, th I think I'm going to have to go for some inventory space when we get the chance. Um, I guess we're going to need resources too, but I figure once I have blueprints unlocked, ow, rude. Okay. Crit rate when in smoke or inflicting shock on enemies in a five by five range when a battery is used. Yeah, sure, I'll go for the charge shock. There we go. Yeah, I might as well use my batteries here. You know, I should also use my uh, grenades. 
That's the other that's the other thing I should work with. That's eh, fine. Another laser guy. Oh, but we're fine. Kind of lucked out there. How did I not hit that lag trap the first time I came in here? I have no idea. But I figure after a certain point, the blueprint stopped dropping. Okay. Throw a grenade. Tough chunker. Yeah, there's so many items. Type shield. Now, how much is this worth? 5%. So this one's, this one's way better. Oh, there's also weapon skills. Oh, right. That is the meta... That is one of the meta progression things. Decon kit. Decreases the contamination level. Oh, that's for using the contaminated items, if I remember right. Um, this game uses kind of the Returnal Equipment Proficiency System. I had forgotten about that. Now I want to play Returnal again. I know it came out on Steam recently, but I've been, uh... I don't want to say disinterested in picking up the Steam version. I feel like if I play Returnal at this point, I'd want to play it co-op. Now I don't have... No, I don't have anything. I guess we're just going to use Drill. Okay. Bomb explosion. Have damage from explosions. Or active skill rises based on how low your remaining energy is. Up to 100%. Interesting. Okay, and a smoke bomb. Don't know if I care. I gotta stop accidentally walking into enemies. Unfortunately, my my limited vision when I'm in a tunnel is kind of rough. Stone wall. So I, I get the distinct feeling we, we can do some like pretty hefty visual customization of the terrarium once we've got it going. I wonder if it actually gives us like um, stat boosts. Because I really liked that about, um, let's see, I really liked that about Dragon Quest Builders, the idea of exploring and finding, um, exploring and, and, sorry, exploring and finding stuff, like, sorry, slightly distracted, uh, new shield, do I want it, what would I drop, I guess I'll just go here, drop the battery. Well, let's compare shields, just because. So less damage from giants. Huh. Nah, that's fine. Uh, but, like, getting new re new uh, recipes for structures and, like, putting them down, some would actually, actually, uh, actually give you, like, a substantive stat boost uh, in some way, shape, or form. And I've always wanted more games to do that, where... The heck is this thing? I have no idea. Like, a, it's an actual ghost. Fair enough. Uh, machine type enemies have a chance of dropping leaky batteries or 20% chance of increasing max energy when using a battery. I'm gonna go for the Mega Hunter instead, if only because I can't imagine we're gonna be here for too, too long. Because, yeah, we're on floor 7 already. Oh, did we enter on, like, floor 5? I think we did. That's probably exactly it. Okay. Stimulant sprayer. Have I gotten any other things? No. I'm just gonna use that. Someone's a monster house. Okay. I'm gonna do it. But I'm gonna do it at the entrance to a room. Huh. It's a monster house. I don't think I want to mess with whatever just exploded. But I'm going to hang out here and just fight these things. Go for the defense boost. It's minor, I know. Okay, let's kill the enemies coming from behind. Okay, blast boost. Bomb explosion, nullify explosions.
Okay, do I have any kind of... Okay, we should probably heal. I don't have a repair kit. a lance. Uh, active skill kite. Complete lock. Oh. Oh, kite moves backwards. Alright, we've leveled up. Uh, let's see. Machine type enemies to drop. No, I'm actually gonna go for last stand. Okay. Infrared goggles. Oh, no. Oh, that's how that works. Oh, the potion didn't kill. Oh. Okay, do not go back in there. I thought I had a repair kit on me. I did not. Okay, so we can use the decontamination on that. Okay, so we have a hit potion, crit rate, 50%, sure. Okay, do we have any other potions? Not really. Okay. I'm still alive. Note to self, though, keep a toolkit around. That could have gone very poorly for me. Okay, so we don't want leaky batteries. But I might be able to throw them at enemies, and it'll do something. Didn't do what I wanted, that's for certain. Okay, slope platform, bloody sand. Yeah, what do we use at this point? Actually, let's... Oh, I see. The higher the level, the more skills we can see for each of these. Okay, that's really cool. Either way, I'm going to drop this. Because we need that. I still want to go back to that monster house and clear it out the rest of the way. Just in case there's anything cool in it. Got 32 HP. The enemies... The enemies hurt. But I'm getting strong enough that maybe it doesn't matter too much. What does a black smoke bomb do? Blinding effect. The ghosts. Okay. So the ghosts go invisible. But that's it. So let's go for the inventory space. I think the ghost is still aggroed, but it's hard to tell. But if I hang out swinging, I can just kill. Okay, so that's a one volt battery. And, more importantly, a uh, repair kit. 
you know, the repair kit that we kind of needed. But it's fine. Okay, so that's a nitrous booster. I'm just going to use the repair kit. Because we've got another one up here. And... Rude. Okay, good. We broke the trap. Okay. Oh. Okay, is there anything here that we don't need? Oh, the blueprints are also worth resources. That's handy. I'm going to drop the black smoke bomb for a toolkit T2. It's contaminated, but we can hold on to that. What about the one volt battery? That's probably the least valuable item here. Okay, cool. And now we can get out of here. That was a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of a risk, but it's fine. Oh, and we still got a whole floor. What? That's interesting. Spawned an egg. I don't know. I do not know what egg do. Okay, do we have a decontamination kit? Yes. Okay, let's, uh, do I have another one? Yes. I should probably take a look at what can contaminate. Oh, it's not a slime, it's a turtle. How did I mistake those two? Uh, anything else get tainted? I don't know why it stepped on that trap a second time around. I'm also not sure about that portal. It's an acid smoke bomb. That's a different type of portal. I don't... I don't know where that goes to. Okay. So it's melting. See, endurance one, endurance two. Okay, now our lance leveled up. So if we take a look at it, yeah, so now it's got. Either I can see that it's giving me plus 10 HP, or I am actually just getting plus 10 HP from having it equipped. I like that. It doesn't feel like it's particularly deep. I want to interact with that teleporter. I want to see where it goes. Enter the mysterious room. Absolutely. You might come across mystery rooms while exploring the wastelands. You can acquire rare items and handy bonuses from these mystery rooms. Oh. Do you have two or more weapons or shields? If you do, try throwing them into the device in the center of the room. Putting two weapons or shields will synthesize them together. Base item skill will be carried over. Higher level will be increased. Ah, and applied to the base item. Second item on a high level, with a high level to quickly level up the base item. Nothing else, synthesis will still raise the level by one, so it's a good idea to keep extra equipment on hand. Cool. Okay, so I have this shield. Okay, so now we have a level 14 shield. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Anything else? No. I left the other lance behind. What is this? Oh. We also have a barrier shield. I don't know what the difference between a barrier shield and a shield shield is. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Nitrous booster, black smoke bomb. We get a blade and a flame arm. Okay. I gotta try the flame arm. It's just a laser. Active skill shot. So the only maybe issue is the flame arm does less damage. But that laser though. Okay, what is my highest level weapon? 
We've got another lance. Okay, equip the flame arm. And then a lance. So what is flame arm? Okay, so they do about the same damage, actually. Okay. So yeah, I'm only going to be able to give it a couple of levels. But that's fine. And we can get out of here with all of this extra stuff. And a level 14 weapon. So here's the question. Do we actually have an upper limit or do we just go until we die? Time to find out. Oh. I bet I could have actually used that item from the ground in retrospect. That's fine. I'll get claws. Ooh. I need more inventory space. I need all sorts of stuff. Claws. What's their ability? Skilled portal. I want to see how much damage that does. Not as much as I'd like. I see. Neat. I don't think I care. Now here's a question. Weapons aren't actually worth that many resources comparatively. And what is this? It's a decontamination kit. Which probably is better than a black smoke bomb. Oh, is melt a status effect that I have to contend with? Probably. Okay, Biogel or Hastened whenever using potions. Let's go for Meat Hunter. I don't actually know how many bi biological units we're going to be fighting here. Oh, shooting also only costs like 10 power. Oh, we need a battery though. Like, pretty badly. And I haven't seen one go by in a while. I guess it is one of those where it doesn't really matter if I die. We're just going as far as I possibly can. Energy is running low. I'm aware. But yeah, I don't think I've left any batteries behind. I'll keep an eye out all the same. Okay, that's another decontamination kit. And 2V battery. Heck yeah. And yep, can just use those from the ground. Wow, these suckers got tanky. But then again, I'm not using uh, weapons that I have particularly high levels with. Oh, interesting. Okay, damage dealt to enemies with status effect or if an attack misses, double damage for the next hit. Worth it. Okay, so we have a lance. I'm gonna throw that. Er. Right. There. I don't know how good bio. Oh, biogel. Ah. So, downside on the biogel does inflict a status effect, but gets me 20 HP and some health. Okay, and the laser has a little bit of a cooldown. Also, it might not do strike through. Okay, don't see anything else. Let's keep going on. So, yeah, it looks like at this point, my entire goal is just to go until I get absolutely crushed. Use a, use a biogel. We've been silenced, but it's fine. So, bonus damage to aerials. I don't know what the Little Mermaid did to these people, but they don't like her. Sorry, I had to. And we just keep going. Now, does this get me to a new region, or are we just infinitely in the dead sands? Because I think it would actually be kind of cool if I could send some resources back at some point. You know, just because. 
hit this thing. There we go. There also seems to be a couple of them. Oh! I had a sweeping attack previously. But that must have been for a specific weapon or an upgrade. Cornered Rat ends cooldowns when HP is low or throw items onto any tile. Max throwing range of six tiles. I'm gonna go for the Cornered Rat. Oops. There we go. So we have a leaky battery. I'm just gonna use it. Emperor Elixir. Nullify skill cooldown. Interesting. Not sure if I care. Like, I kind of prefer the floor-wide upgrades when and where I can. Okay, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get at this sucker. Huh. So that's what it do. A lot of damage. Uh, let's see, so what else do we have? Oh. I was going to throw the acid smoke bomb, but in retrospect, that's a poor idea. Want is a big room. Nope. Okay, sleepy bomb or a duster. Swap. Well. Yeah, we we just want as many blueprints as, as we possibly can get our hands on. Because if they both count as uh a blueprint and materials, oh, that was actually the end of it. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I could have actually min-maxed that more. Seriously? I only got that many resources. Hopefully I get a bitter, ba b bitter bigger backpack at some point. <laughs> that seems unsafe. Oh, Robbie, welcome back. Come to think of it, isn't this your first time coming home to the new Terrarium? I ought to give you a quick briefing about how the wastelands work around here. The wastelands you're exploring were originally an auto-propagating shelter made by the humans in the past. Now that they're extinct, the shelter has been automatically propagating and transforming uncontrollably. That's why the lay of the land is different every time, even though you're exploring the same place. Are you still following? Of course you are. That's my Robbie now. Now on to the next part. As for the me mechanism that allows you to return here after your expedition, the shelters of the system in place to automatically retrieve objects that it deems a waste. It transports them to the nearest scrapyard for disposal. It appears as though our current location was once a greenhouse where vegetation was cultivated. Now this place is just being used by the shelter as a scrapyard. So whatever you're, whenever you're incapacitated or reach the end of the system, or end of the wastelands, the automatic disposal system activates and returns you here each and every time. Of course, the drawback is that refuse is passed through a disposal unit as a safety measure, so all of your upgrades and items are removed upon your return. Dismantled items still turn into usable resources, so you can make the most of them to upgrade and fill the terrarium with all kinds of objects. That concludes today's lesson. Since you get the uh, since you get resources even if you get incapacitated, doing so over and over again will help you collect what you need. Now record this data into your memory. And good luck out there. Right, I should probably save. Filter has been installed to reduce the ickiness of some enemies. Filter can be toggled on and off. That's that's interesting. I don't think we're going to be able to see it. Cute on off. I'm just gonna leave that on because I'm kind of curious. Also message speed. Uh, let's see, so I can also save load, but first, so a duster, ooh. Okay, so unfortunately I don't have enough, or no, I do have enough resources for some of these. But if you notice, each of these give, gives me a base stat bonus that I can use. So unfortunately I'm gonna to have to get the repair materials and that's gonna use up all of my crafting ingredients for the time being, but that's okay. We've gathered everything you need to make a terrarium bottle. Thank you so much. Now just sit back and leave the rest to me. I'll show you that I'm more than just a bag of circus by making the most wonderful home for Toriko. <laughs> oh, they're all done. I've been uh, holding off this entire time because unless I'm wildly misremembering, Toriko is also the name of a really legendary manga about eating. And so I just had the mental image of like, we pop the uh, capsule open and that Toriko pops out instead and just starts eating everything. 
Oh, that'd be glorious. I miss that manga. It was total nonsense, but it was a lot of fun. What do you think of this seamless finish? It's quite superb if I do say so myself. The glass had to be thick in order to guarantee a sturdy construction, but that also made it a challenge to create a smooth, uh, to create smooth curved surfaces. But I didn't cut a single corner. For this shall be the pl palace of our dear Toriko. As such, I'm proud to say the final product is as sturdy as it is pleasing. I'm confident that this terrarium will be capable of protecting Toriko against spores and any other kind of co any other contaminants. Now, it's time to let Toriko out of her vessel. I feel like we need like a uh, decontamination chamber so we can come in and out of here because like it really doesn't feel like the uh, spores are gone. I mean, those are probably like in front of and behind the canister. But also, how do we like we need an airlock and deke eh, whatever it doesn't is a video game. Check out your new tube, human. Be grateful to your robot overlords. We care for you and take, uh, take, well, we care for you and reattach your limbs when they fall off. Huh. Looks like Toriko isn't quite sure about her new surroundings. She's all fidgety and nervous in that nook she's found. Huh. Perhaps she'll get used to it over time. Now that the minimum requirements to sustain life have been fulfilled, it's time to take good care of Toriko, just like we used to. We may be the cream of the crop when it comes to caring for Toriko, but this new location is sure to come with its own challenges, unlike any we've seen before. I'll give you a refresh on how to look after her, just in case your memory chips have gotten rusty and dusty. Let me know when you're ready, when you're ready and I'll begin the lesson. Or, my voice is starting to go, so instead, I'm just gonna call it here. So, Void Terrarium 2 is available on the Switch and PlayStation, as is the first game. It's not cheap, I think it was 40 bucks for this one, which, like... I think you will actually get a decent amount of gameplay out of this, considering, you know, dungeon crawling, rinse, repeat over and over again, and uh, all of the different things to collect and upgrade and whatnot. And, like I said, all of the little decorations actually give us stat bonuses, at least the first time we make them. So, uh, specifically, like, getting this duster would be kind of nice. Three defense? I don't actually know what my default stats are. Uh, but I'm assuming they're low enough that a three defense bonus would actually be pretty substantial. Wait. Okay, I've started going really slow. And I no longer know how to not go slow. Oh well, it doesn't matter that much. Oops, that's the capture button. Nope, not sure. Um, but either way, if you're a big fan of Mystery Dungeon-esque games, this is probably one of the better ones I've ever played. Not that I've played too many of them. Uh, namely, I really, really, really like the on... Uh, like, whenever you level up, you get a small perk. And the small perk is usually just some kind of statistical benefit, but I could still very much see, on like a really long run, getting that grenade upgrade early, and then stacking as many upgrades as you can to generate more and more grenades and explosives in different manners. Like, I bet you could use that to do some pretty wild stuff. And I'm kind of looking forward to seeing where that goes. At some point, I'm going to do a video on uh, some of the better mystery dungeon games out there. And uh, it's part of the reason why I wanted to feature this one is because, I, admittedly, my experience with the genre is kind of limited, but it still feels like this is one I'd like to showcase further. But with all of that said, if you guys like this video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like helps more than you know. And if you want to see more rad new indie games every single day, then hit subscribe because I got tons to show off. But I guess with that said, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.